Hello everyone. In today's video, I will be explaining about diabetic ketoacidosis. In short form, it is written and known as DKA. D for diabetic, K for keto and A for acidosis. In diabetic ketoacidosis, as the name suggests, there is decreased insulin release, insulin secretion, and because of this, there is increased level of glucose in the body. And because of that, the person is known as suffering from diabetes. So there is decreased insulin release and because of this a condition called diabetes occurs. In diabetes there is more of glucagon secretion, glucagon secretion which will try to increase the release of insulin and because of which there will be more of gluconeogenesis, newer glucose will be formed. So there will be more of gluconeogenesis, gluconeogenesis and as such also because of there is decreased insulin release there is more of glucose in the body. This causes glycosuria, this causes increased excretion of glucose in the urine which is known as glycosuria and these all causes osmotic diuresis, osmotic diuresis which then leads to the volume and electrolyte depletion. Volume and electrolyte depletion. There is loss of fluid along with the electrolytes. So, volume and electrolyte loss or depletion will be there. On decreased insulin, on decreased insulin, there will be more of glucose, more of glucose and there will be lesser glucose utilization as we know that insulin helps in utilizing glucose so lower insulin will cause lesser glucose utilization now for the cellular function the energy which the cell gets is mostly from the increased proteolysis and lipolysis increased proteolysis and lipolysis because of which there is more of free fatty acid and as a byproduct there is more of ketone body formation ketone body formation and that causes ketogenesis or increased ketone body or increased ketogenesis this also leads to this leads to the increased acid ketone is acid so there is more of acid accumulation in the body that also cause volume and electrolyte depletion or loss. So we have diabetes because of lesser insulin, increased ketone body formation because of which there is acidosis and ultimately there is volume and electrolyte loss. So this is diabetic keto acid. Now coming to the manifestations of diabetic ketoacidosis. There is excessive thirst, there is frequent urination, there is nausea and vomiting, there may be abdominal pain, there is weakness and fatigue, there may be shortness of breath, there is fluty scented breeze and confusion. Now the treatment of diabetic ketoacidosis, as we know that in diabetic ketoacidosis there is more of glucose because of lesser of insulin secretion, so we need to give insulin from outside. So in this case regular insulin is preferred in a bolus dose of 0.1 unit per kg intravenous. The same can be maintained at the dose of 0.1 unit per kg per hour in future. The second is because there is 
fluid and electrolyte depletion or loss we need to make it by giving normal saline intravenously at the rate of 1 liter per hour now if there is hypokalemia hypokalemia which may occur which may occur because when the ketosis subsides there is internal internalization of potassium that means potassium gets inside the cell and there may be severe hypokalemia for which potassium chloride may have to be given at the dose of 20 milli equivalent per hour to the IV drip. Now sodium bicarbonate carbonate may also be necessary. If there is pH less than 7. When after giving regular insulin and normal saline, the ketosis subsides and then there is the normalization of the pH. But in case if the pH does not get normal and the pH is still less than 7, then there may be a need of giving sodium bicarbonate, which is given at the rate of 50 milli equivalent to the IV drip. Now, potassium chloride and sodium bicarbonate, they are not needed every time and all the time. So, it depends upon the patient. If the patient is hypokalemic and the pH is less than 7, then they need to be given potassium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. So, this was all about diabetic ketoacidosis and its